Uh, here's my view log for the um <laughs> Here is um for the thirtieth, October thirtieth. Um I did a video yesterday but I didn't upload it. Um I had computer problems, uh my um my computer like the mouse wouldn't click and the and the computer pad wouldn't click and so I couldn't uh, so then I finally did a uh, upgrade, an update, and um, that fixed it, but it took a while, so that's why I didn't really upload, because I couldn't upload it when I wanted to, um, and then I got lazy. But um, yesterday I was talking about how I had to blow $862 to get my ferret back, because it, it jumped off my deck, because, uh, dude, oh, I'm getting my feet massaged right now, and I'm at level max, ow. Oh God! And when it like when it changes directions and then goes forward on my feet, like oh my God! It like goes so deep that it pops the other things out. It pops the little you know nodules out all the time anyway. But the first time in the morning, it like hurts because throughout the night, I guess my feet get inflamed or something. But ah. and then if I were just to like squat or like run a lot and then get a foot massage on this thing, it would hurt. So these things are awesome, dude. I do, like, oh my god. So anyways, um, I kind of gobbled up the day yesterday, um, but I also took, like, a day off and stretched a little bit, but, uh, I was, <laughs> I was, like, wasted, um, from the lifting and the swimming. Like, that, that was, made me tired for two days. Like, it didn't just make, put me out of condition for the next day. I could have ridden, my legs were fine, but... More or less, they were a little sore, but um, I still had the um, the, uh, mini the, uh, the edema, and I still have the edema now. In fact, you can kind of barely see it, though. Yeah, it came down a lot since yesterday, but that's the edema. It's still there. And it's still a little puffy there, but it's, it's not, you know, it's, this is how my left um, knee is supposed to look. So I bet you my knee is probably not definitely not good enough to squat. <laughs> in fact, it won't even be good to squat after it heals. But I, <laughs> I'm gonna squat anyway, and I'll get an, <laughs> another edema. <laughs> yeah, hopefully after a half dozen edemas, they'll stop popping every time I squat 50 pounds. But um, 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 yeah. So yesterday. That was day before yesterday. I was just getting the ferret back and stretching and all that. But yesterday, I got a couple of doves. I got up in the morning, kind of late. And I got up late today, too, man. I looked at the watch. It was like 10. I was like, oh, my God. I was I was sitting here <laughs> vegging out in front of the television until 1 in the morning. I just couldn't. I had no motivation. I was smoking weed. Yesterday was the last day that I smoked weed from this cash that I had. This leftover cash that I had that I bought. And then when I went to my mom's house, I, I, there was this plant that I gave her a couple days ago that grew in my closet. And uh, I put it there, but I accidentally chopped off a little branch on the bottom and I put it on the top. I was like, ooh, that branch. I grabbed the branch. Hey. <laughs> I smoked that when I came back here. So I was like... I was like vegged out. I actually drank alcohol the night before last. I had a little thing of like cinnamon whiskey and a little thing of tequila and I got buzzed, which got, that's what caused me to go go back and buy candy. I didn't mention that, but yeah, so my diet's been crap, but um, yesterday um, I got up and hey, just looked at the Humane Society, it's kind of something I do every once in a while, you know, like some people look at car things to see what's going on with the cars, and I, um, I, um, I uh, looked and I saw that they had a dove, they, they had like six ferrets for the longest time, now they don't have any ferrets finally, but they had a, they had a dove for 15 bucks, and I was like, a big ass dove for 15 bucks oh and i was like oh man i want it because that seemed like i could just you know easy as pie to get so i went in there but they had two doves one for 20 one for 15 so yeah 35 bucks i got two of these doves and um 
and um, went to my mom's house. She's gonna give me food. Um, yeah, I think I was gonna help her with a couple things. <clears throat> and hung out there for a while because it took a while to eat and the doves were kind of in the box brought them in but yeah then I came back here and I did stretching I was I was tired yesterday and also I kind of had motivation problems like <laughs> one way that I gauge on how much to train like I want to train as hard as I can like there's nothing getting in my way now and except for being out of shape and I guess hopefully that won't be that it's actually aged because in my mind, I'm still, like, thinking, like, man, I should be able to go all day, every day. And it's like, come on, don't make me old yet. Let me do it for 10 years until I'm 60, and then I'll quit. But, um, let me do it for 10 years until I'm 60, and then I'll buy a mountain bike, become a mountain biker. <laughs> um, bikes are so expensive these days, you can you have to kind of, like, choose a bike sport and stick to it, because it's too, you can't buy all the bikes. So the, cho the sport that I chose for cycling is... I have a time trial bike. Eee! Sometimes I wish I got the mountain bike instead with a gravel bike because there's so many cool trails around here. But um, Yeah, maybe I could become a pro and, and have this stuff given to me at a discount. I guess they're on those discounts already. They're selling a Shiv mountain bike, specialized Shiv mountain bike for 7300 which is like... They were 11,000, then they took them down to 8, and now 73. Everybody's running out of money. But, um, um, what was I talking about? Um, yeah, so I didn't really have anything to do yesterday in terms of just, just the stretching, because I was kind of wasted. I didn't want to, there was nothing I could do really. Um, I could lift weights, I could have done abs or bicep, but. I was just too vegged out from the weed, and um, I was hanging out there watching dub tutorials all day long. Um, just people talking about them and um, how to feed them, and uh, while I was in there hanging out with my doves and trying to figure out my computer. And um, my doves are super uh, calm. When I tried to put my hand up next to them, they flew away from me, but then this morning when I did like close to them, they didn't. And uh, when I look at them, they look calm, but... Um, um, what I found out about doves is that all doves and pigeons, they're the same thing, were brought to America when we came to America in the 16 and 1700s, and then they escaped and became wild. So there's like 30 million doves in America, and there's like a couple thousand doves just in Boulder. Like, they're everywhere, and, and it's actually the same species. It's like the something, can't remember, the rock dove. <laughs> What I have is the white dove is the same species as these these uh, brown pigeons you see running all over the place. Even though it's been 375 years since 1650, so they've had plenty of time to evolve. But um, but uh, yeah, like we domesticated them five to ten thousand years ago in Europe and the Middle East, and um, and so they were domesticated all that time. And then we brought them to America, and they become wild. So that's why you see, like, wild doves, like, flying around you, and pigeons, like, at the park, like, separate, like, surrounding old men as they're passing out seeds to them, because they're all descendants of tame animals. Um, yeah. I have to make, so what I'm going to do is let them hang out in that room and put the food out. I'm not even clear exactly what food to give them. I... My mom gave me some seeds that she was giving, and I had some, like, parakeet seeds, and then I, my mom gave me sunflower seeds that she bought for the birds, and, um, and some little fruit. They ate, they ate the apple, so I'm going to give them whatever they like to eat, um, sweets and stuff, I guess, but, um, I guess doves are, like, um, scavengers, like, they'll eat whatever, that's why they're good survivors, so they're not that hard to take care of, and apparently doves are better pets than parrots, and really good pets they're just not popular because people equate them with um with uh, like vermin you know because they're not protected because they're everywhere and so people can do whatever they want with them and they just don't think of them as pets but apparently people who know birds say that they're better they're the best bird pet they're better than parrots because they don't they're not loud they coo every once in a while which is a nice coo um they don't attack you they can't hurt you as much as a parrot um, they eat less, they're easier to feed, 
like they eat they eat a, more, a wider variety they eat seeds and I guess parrots don't they've been domesticated longer and I guess they also get affectionate just like any other bird they just don't know how to learn how to talk like parrots do but um so yeah I'm just gonna leave them in that room because I can't get a roommate dude like my days of being able to get roommates somehow are over and it's gonna end forever I should try to get a roommate again but they're basically starting a new town right next to where I live. And I don't even know how they're going to fill those up. Because they've, they've got all these new skyscrapers there. It's like, we're, that they have to fill in with tenants. And it's like, so I have to compete with that. <sighs> Did get an interest in somebody just saying, do you want to move in? Do you, do you have room? It was like a 70-year-old lady. I'm like, Jesus, dude. Who looks like she's like homeless. I'm like, oh my God. So that's actually one, one good thing about me getting in shape again is that I could become more appealing to, you know, a roommate. I could, I could advertise myself as an athlete, um, you know, and get a roommate that way and not just some, like, stoner. But if I do get a roommate, I'd have to... Um, see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let them in, give the spare room to the doves. And then I open the doors and I work out. I'll, I'll, I think I'll do a little bit of that today, lifting weights before I do my enduro thing. I'm going to do an enduro thing today. I haven't decided what. I might be able to ride, but I don't think I should because my edema is still visible. And my leg was hurting yesterday and was wobbly. Because um, I also have a torn um, meniscus. That's how I got the edema. So... Um, um, I could row, but my shoulders are sore, and I could swim, but my shoulders are sore, so it's one of the two that I'll be doing. I think I'll, I'll do a combo between rowing and swimming, because I can't row for that long, because my butt gets sore, and, uh, so yeah, I'll do, like, row a th couple thousand K or whatever, whatever I can do before my butt gets sore, um, and then swim, and then row, swim, but lift weights, stretch a little bit, lift weights, but I got up late, so, anyway, um, yeah, today's kind of like my first day of being sober. I have to have to clean up my place. I got like super lazy. I like totally vegged out last night. Um, and I can't smoke weed anymore. I have, like I have to. I have to quit smoking weed for reals now um, because I get asthma every night, and I don't even know how much it is for more asthma medication that I'm running out of. And it'll give me an early death. It'll never get better. Only get worse. So plus I get in the habit of of eating edibles, you know, and so, it's ridiculous to smoke anything, so, like, I have asthma right now, just from smoking, so, um, last night, so, um, but, like, I smoked weed the last time, yesterday, because it was there, it was, like, hanging as a little stick, and it was the same day that I was smoking the weed that I bought, but the reason that I got that weed the last time was because I, I wanted to get high the first time I swam, rode, lifted weights with the pulleys, and, um, and, yeah, and, uh, and did squatting, and I did all that kind of stuff, yeah, since that last time, you know, because I'm kind of, like, setting up my apartment as I'm, um, trying to get in shape, and, like, all this stuff at the same time, and I waited so long that I'm, like, yeah, more out of the habit than I thought I was, like, once I get going, it's okay, but, like, training, but to get going, it's kind of like, oh, I need to make, get good at managing my time. Um, I got some more things in the mail. I got that I'm going to try today. I got that in the mail yesterday. So it's a handle that goes on the, um, see there's the pulley system. And it's a handle that goes on the pulley system. So like you can use a real handle with that strap. And then you can stick the handle on top of the, the pull-up bar like how that handle is. And I haven't even done the three sets of ten with it, those straps. So... And I got that. That's for that's for sit-ups. And I got the um, I got another attachment where the metals are together that you see at the gym. And then I also got got a um, uh, an ankle attachment so I can work out my legs with that. So I'm gonna experiment a little a little bit. Even though, it, anyways, um, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm out of like almost out of battery. This thing wasn't charging charging last night. Check it out, it's my four, it's my four budgies, they're having a, a discourse.
Uh, my lizard isn't up. He was up yesterday. I have to get lizard food today. Today's the last time that I can um, can get it. Here's my weed plant. Here's my next, my new one. I gave, I harvested two recently. And here's the little babies. I got a bunch of babies coming down the pipeline. Three of them, four of them, just in there. They get to dwell in the um, the uh, shadow of the biggie. That one will be done in maybe a couple of weeks. But anyway, let me show you my doves. So they're pretty, uh, they're pretty tame. You're tame, aren't you? White rock dove. They're called messenger pigeons. You like it? So, yeah, I could get a roommate and I could be like, they could be like, yeah, do you don't mind that there's a couple of doves hanging out? No. <laughs> now see, if I got a roommate, what I would do is I'd let them just hang out free room in um, my living room. And then when I have to put them in a cage, like when I'm gone, because I wouldn't want them hanging out. If I have the ferrets out and the doves in or whatever, I could put the doves in this cage together. It's probably big enough, like one could be down there and one could be up there, and they could at least be watching. Sitting there and watching everything else in the apartment. But So anyways, um, I have to do... <clears throat> I have to clean up and... Uh, yeah, I guess today... Um, I'm going to take my time, you know. I'm going to... Today's a training day where I'll be busy. I'll, I'm not going to stretch too much because if, if I'm like, ooh, I'm going to stretch today, then, like, that's all I'll do. Like, I'll, I'll just... And I won't even do all, many stretches. I'll just do the same stretches. That's what I did yesterday. Just do the same stretches over and over again. Like this one, my arm behind my back, both of my arms like this with the... With the, uh, the, uh, the bench and then... Um, getting my hips out and just doing it over and over again just my hips and I'll, even just one side like my left hip and then my left shoulder like all day long and that's my day <laughs> but I do feel that I do feel it's getting better like I'm getting slightly more because I can tell in the positions I have to hold and that I have to kind of get a little bit more aggressive in the stretch positions I think I am very slowly getting more and more limber in my hip and my like being able to do this the splits and making my left side not as sore yeah get slowly getting limber very slowly getting more and more limber um but they're still sore like that's why it's addictive that's why i do it all day because when i'm stretching my hip and my shoulder they're both sore like sore like like how muscles get sore it's a different kind of sore but it's like damn so it kind of makes it feel good and get addictive and stuff so so that's my video for the day um i just, luckily I just have enough juice i'm gonna upload this now because i didn't upload my one yesterday and um yeah i don't even have any more like goober to scrape i actually scraped goober off of my bong last night <laughs> at like one in the morning like just from a couple of buds that i smoked in it <laughs> And I actually did get some, but it didn't get me high because of my. By then, my my uh, my um, tolerance had gone up again. <laughs> One other thing I want to talk about that I talked about yesterday, and I won't talk about it too long, but my new goal in life, my intellectual goal, is to memorize um, Plato politics, um, and. Um, yeah, like one way that I want to memorize it is by um, like looking at every single polity, especially the more famous um, countries in the past, city-states. And I want to like, I want to be able to know what type of government they were throughout its entire existence. And, and then explain how it got that way and explain why it was this government. Because... People get confused about the best rules, ways of government. I'm going to turn this back on. Because, um, and I'm actually discussing it with ChatGTP. And ChatGTP doesn't have the same insight as a human does. So, ChatGTP is kind of like hanging out with a super smart person who doesn't really have their own opinion. So, you can tell the person what to think and then they'll like agree with you. You know, they're like that buddy who just wants to agree with you all the time. And, um, because I was like, Chet, it was kind of like Socratic question, because I was like, if the best form of government would be the polity, then how come the Roman Empire was a, was a kingdom? 
you know and it, so it was like some kind of a mixture between a kingdom and a polity but um you know i actually didn't get to the i actually didn't answer for it what i would have said was well because they they had you know the military was controlling everybody nobody could do anything and that's what made it fall anyway so what i said was so maybe the uh roman empire wouldn't have fallen if it was um an aristocracy instead of a kingdom you know or uh, a uh polity instead of a kingdom and, and it's like well yes it's nuanced but perhaps but anyway there was another example um with sparta sparta was a kingdom and then it turned into an aristocracy and then it turned into an oligarchy and it was an oligarchy when it was in its height but oligarchy is supposed to be not as good as aristocracy so i asked ChatGPT, and i'm like why and they're like oh i don't know so i go well the reason is because they're a parasitic state they were living off the helots um, and they're like, oh, right, so that's what allowed it. So then that means it wasn't, it wasn't actually a healthy state. It was like a bad state that the, the surrounding city-states just hadn't gotten around to setting right yet. And it was freaking great for the Spartans. But it kind of shows how people are like, have their, um, their priorities mixed up now. Because when you look at ancient Rome, ancient world, they'll be like, some, what, what were some of the greatest, you know, and they'll be like, oh, Sparta. And then they have all these awesome things to say about Sparta, warrior this, warrior that, you know, but then if you could bring up the idea, oh, but they were actually not successful, they were horrible to the Helots who were the natives, you know, who, 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 moves, in, who moves in on natives of a, land, of a land and then makes them your slave. Like, if, if you're ever going to justify slavery, it was because some bastards tried to, in, tried to invade your territory but you defeated them and, and then you had you made them their slave so because you had humane you don't want to kill them so like the spartans were just the worst man and um but people think that they're the best because they're the most interesting right so the most interesting means the best so then you're like who are the greatest people alive today oh there's Donald trump why because he's president and because he is a billionaire or he says he's a billionaire and but you're like, yeah, okay, but what about the greatest as in the most healthy for society, you know, the most representative of uh, how we're all going to be in the future when we're all more civilized, you know? And people are like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> you know? It's like they haven't made the connection yet. Um, so that's why, like, when I, I want to memorize the book and I want to get all of the different um, memorized all the different changes of government that he mentioned. He mentioned it happening in Argos, Crete, which had a, a, a constitution similar to Sparta. And actually, the um, the Sabines, who the second king, Numas, was, who lived just up the hill from Rome, they were a colony of Sparta. So Rome, with their whole, like, warrior culture, um, you know, that, that was derived from Sparta. They're, they're kind of like Spartans. Um, and they're also descendants of Trojans, but... Um, so um, yeah, he's talking about the um, the the the, uh, the balance. You know, you have the balance of all the different forms of government. You can't have a pure anything, and that's why they say Rome did well. And um, their analogy was like, you know, you could have a nice big nose, but you don't want it to be too big because then it's not a nose anymore. So um, I just wanted to read all the different examples of changes of government and exactly what happens everywhere, and like memorize it. Um, and then eventually I was going to put it onto my book on my website. And I think I was going to like label them very, very compactly within the uh, menu. But um, yeah, that's what I've been doing the last couple of days. I listen, I spend as much of the day as I can just listening to the book over and over again and making notes. And um, But then I got into the habit of um, what I want to do with the help of chat TTP. It's like something I would like to talk to when I have time laying in bed at night or whatever. Or maybe when I'm stretching and I have a hand free. Or maybe... Maybe even when I'm writing. <laughs> um, actually, um, um, figure out all the different stages of government um, that every single famous like kingdom in the past was. So the 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 general um, path of government is first it's king because you're a family of people when you start a colony or something. Um, unless you're a, you're like a um, a colony, an actual colony, and then you can be like a polity from the beginning where you make everything equal. 
But like, if, but you're normally like if it's something organically grown, it's a kingdom, and then it becomes an aristocracy um, from like the most powerful of the king's kids, and then it turns into an oligarchy, which it, where it becomes bigger and more separate, and so then the people demand more justice. So then they transform from an oligarchy, actually, because because it, it goes from positive form of the government to negative. So it goes kingdom tyranny. So then they go, okay, we need to have an aristocracy, which is good. But then that turns into oligarchy. So t kingdom tyranny, aristocracy, oligarchy. And then it turns into a democracy. They're like, you know, the people need to say in the stupid oligarchy. So it turns into a democracy, which then they figure out turns into a polity. And then the polity is the very best form of government. It's the only good form of government. That's what we know as a republic. It's a country that people follow the laws and then and then the rules and the laws get older and stronger as time goes on and then it turns into a culture and uh, yeah you have a polity a really healthy polity which could then colonize and then grow their culture and become an empire which is kind of what Rome did Rome was the polity and then it um, as it was becoming an empire it switched into a, uh, a kingdom so um, but um um, and then, but not, not everything follows the same, uh, path, you know, like you could become, you could go aristocracy and then go, um, or I mean, oligarchy and then switch in from that to a, uh, democracy, which then turns into a tyranny. So one thing that I was trying, wanted to do with the help of chat GTP is, is all these different forms of government tr uh, transition from one to another. There's that point where it's equal parts, the two. So there's parts, you know, so when it transforms from like a extreme democracy to a tyranny, like an extreme, like play, uh, Aristotle said, extreme democracy and tyranny are the same thing. So there's the point where you're like, yeah, this is extreme democracy and it's the beginning of a tyranny. It's, it's, it's both. And so I wanted to, with the help of ChatGP, and I'll put it on the book, but I just wanted to be able to describe and even give examples of the halfway points of all those different um, structures, you know. Something that's halfway um, kingdom, half half um, um, aristocracy. Something that's halfway aristocracy, halfway oligarchy, and um, half uh, half democracy, half tyranny. Because a lot of really famous, um, like I said, polities in the past were like not healthy. You know, like Syracuse in the time of um, um, Pythagoras was a tyranny. Um, but tyrannies usually only last one or two generations. Um, but so I was like, so does that mean that the Roman Empire was the longest ever surviving tyranny? <laughs> and it was like, well, that's complicated, but perhaps. But, um, um, you know, and um, Sparta, everybody loves Sparta, but that was actually an oligarchy. And um, um, Athens could have been like, Loss of war because they were a little bit too much, too extreme of a democracy. That's what got Socrates killed was because Athens was too extreme of a democracy. They just listened to the masses who were just knee-jerk reaction. And then they all like regretted it afterwards because they didn't have any laws to go off of. Um, you know, and, and like elder statesmen to guide the people. So, um, yeah, that's why. I mean, it's only like a 380-page book, but... I feel like, like that's the only thing that I want to learn. Like, if I can't, if I can't memorize politics, then it's helpless. I'm not going to try to learn anything else. And if I can memorize politics, I could memorize anything. Um, and uh, that if I demonstrate that I memorize politics, you know, do a video about it and like show that I memorize the whole thing and remember, like every single example that he gives, then I actually deserve like money. I deserve a payout, a cash payout. Um, and that anybody who does that deserves that, you know, because that will bring people back to politics and get people to be not so confused and think that uh, tyrannies are what we want. Because a lot of people out there, you want to, when you interview MAGA, they're like, what's better, a democracy or a kingdom? And they straight up will be like, kingdom's better because we love our Trump. And then even even the more educated intele intellectual guys, dark web dudes like... Um, um, Michael Knowles said that he, that he read politics and that there's changes of government and so that's why we need to switch from democracy back to kingdom. He literally said that. And then Jeremy Goring literally said the same thing. 
And, uh, you know, when Michael Knowles said it, he said it in front of his buddies. Like, all those guys were sitting in a corner in a circle together trying to be smart. And Matt Walsh was, like, bragging about how he didn't read. Like, straight up. <laughs> but, like, Ben Shapiro was there, and that old guy were there. Who is, he's old, but he's not intellectual. He got fame. He got made his money from, like, writing, like, horror novels and mystery novels. But, um, so he's not, he never was a politician. But, so you see Ben Shapiro, Mr. Intellectual. I saw, like, a bumper sticker saying Shapiro for president. And he's here, he's here like, nodding along. As Michael Knowles is talking about how we need to get rid of democracy and go back to kingdom because of so that we hold true to the cycle of of governmental change, but like we're in the world of civilization, like in a world of civil. You go back to a kingdom when everything's topsy turvy and uh, shit's hitting the fan all the time. When you're living in a world of civilization, you 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 creep. That's why they said we're trying to create a more perfect union and the. The, the constitution you constantly make it more perfect more perfect creeping more and more towards more laws more polis more polity more culture you know that lasts longer to solidify and um and more inclusion more democracy so more laws and more democracy not not a, a devolving like if you're going to start start talking about we have to devolve it's like why because there's a bunch of like mexicans moving here and they're gonna like bring their culture with them and they're going to stop following the law and we're going to devolve into a uh, into an extreme democracy which needs to be counterbalanced by the intelligentsia oligarchy. Um, that is the most cynical, freaking racist worldview. Um, it's like we're coming back to the Nazism, you know? It's basically the same thing. So um, that's why... That's why uh, Rich people should straight up pay people who can memorize politics. And we need, but we also need to identify that that's the book to read and to identify that um, polities are better than, than tyrannies. I mean, we are like, we got our heads so far up our asses because our educational system only values chemistry. I got kicked out of, I got like not graduated or whatever. I got kicked out of chemistry class because my grades weren't good enough and they're stupid tests. It's caused me to not get accepted in CU, which caused me to go to another school, and then they look at their grades, and then they say, oh, they, they have, like, some kind of math thing, and then they make up excuses. And at the end of the day, the people who are, like, like me, who are into history and politics, there's no place for us. There's no industry for it. There's no mechanism, um, even even in the beginning, because the, the only way people know how to judge each other is stuff that nobody ever does, like... Who, who, what, uh, what adult in the real world goes around talking about chemistry, math, chemistry equations, and, uh, and, um, like, algebra and trigonometry, that's, that's like engineer shit, that's like we're trying to create engineers to make weapons to kill the Russians, like, like, uh, we need to switch the values up and, and, uh, and, um, push, push people, algorithmatize, as they say, people who talk about philosophy and history, dude. Otherwise, it's just going to be a bunch of people, right-wingers, talking about the more money you have, the smarter you are, and it doesn't even, who cares how you made your money? Like, Vivek Ramaswamy got rich off of investors, and now he wants to do, he wants to be president. Uh, that fire guy went to jail for ripping people off on fire, now he wants to do fire too. Um, um, there was another guy, um, the WeWork guy, um, failed at failed at um, a business he made, baby baby clothes. I saw this on Patrick Boyle's page, uh, economics or whatever. So then he does WeWork, gets 70, 80 billion million dollars of investors, never made any profit, but got rich off the investment money and then wants to use that money to start another business. And so then they go around, oh, and, and they're like, um, or Martin Schiarelli, you know? So like those guys would hang out and like they're smart and they're awesome and they're players. But they never provided anything for anybody. They just somehow knew people to give them a bunch of money. And so now it's their money. And, um, you know, um, and now, now they're the guys, you know, like that guy, Jordan or whatever, that they made Wolf of Wall Street is now like a social media guy. And, you know, if you have an oversaturation of people like that, it's going to toxic, toxify the environment. They're going to start, they're, they're going to get in the habit of never talking about anything real like history of politics, they'll just skate over it to 
push their own agenda of Nazi fascism and and then anybody who comes along who tries to be intellectual, they're going to get shoved down, like me. My website could get ignored or made illegal until somebody with money, until they make a law that says you have to throw, pay a $50,000 entrance fee to have a website, and then you can say whatever the hell you want. You can control the world that way. So um, we need to change the values and make people um, actually pay people. And you do algorithmatize people who do history and um, philosophy, but actually pay people who memorize the entire popular history books. So that's why I, I'm, I'm like, that. I'm actually thinking to myself, I'm getting paid. Like, I don't have anybody set up to pay me, but in my head, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to get paid. Like, straight up, somebody's going to write me a check for 50000 bucks just because I did a YouTube video. Not, not, because I, not because I didn't ask. Like, I'll do the video and then I'll ask. I'll straight up enter email and try to contact people. But, um, but yeah, I'll do a video and just, just demonstrate that I memorized the entire book and be like, pay me now. Because if I get paid, somebody else is going to try to do it. Because people like money. And then it turns into a cultural thing. And then people can shut down all the schools. We can use that tax money for people to self-educate with the technology we have. And, uh, and uh, you know, like with bike racing, people are like self-educating, becoming really good bike racers, kids and stuff. I saw getting competitive just from like teaching themselves like Strava and all that kind of stuff. So, and um, motivating and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, it can spread to every other, every other thing too. You know, we still live in a world where people want to get accepted into school and, Man, I feel, I hope the bubble's about to pop. Anyways, enough talking. Talk to you tomorrow.